So before we start, just an announcement that uh, we'll make a group uh, picture tomorrow uh, after the, the colloquium. So tomorrow is at 2 p.m., right? We have the colloquium. After the colloquium, uh, we start a discussion on the experiments. Who, you know, everyone will, will, will uh, select the experiments they wish to make more. And while people are in the room, we will take uh, the group photo. Photo. So right after Stefan uh, colloquium group photo. Okay. So now we can start with uh, Orlando Paris on the trio neutrino. Oi. Can you hear me? No. Okay. Yes, can you hear me? Okay, I, uh, just a little known, uh, first thank you the organization to invite me, and then I'm going to about, uh, talk about the stellar neutrinos and why it is important now. Then this is only a, a summary of something I'm going to talk here about the, what did it mean, the, what did it mean this stellar neutrino? It's basically they say, uh, the question can be, you can make some like this. You know that you have three the neutrinos, the red and mu tau neutrino, but the one question you can ask yourself is say, can you have more neutrinos? Why you need to stick with these three neutrinos? There's something special for these three neutrinos, or can you have more states that look like neutrinos? This is the basic question. It's exactly like the question they say, like the Rabi said, they say, why you have mu? You have red, why you have mu? Here, the same thing about the neutrinos. Okay? And then, how you to search for this, uh, this specific kind called sterile neutrino, hints of sterile neutrinos, and then what you can constrain this, and uh, what you can do uh, uh, depends for this. Okay? Then first, I'm going to remind you the state about the, the, what you know about in the, so the, uh, and so, uh, some time ago, that what you assume that they say, what you define by electro neutrino is the neutrino that you produce electron at the same time, mu neutrino to produce a mu and tau neutrino tau. You never produce something like you have a mu neutrino, uh, a neutrino mu neutrino and a different favor, okay? And this is very, uh, was uh, made eternal. This is the grave of Ipundo Pontecovo, one very important neutrino physicist in Rome. And then he like here, physical, no, physicist, and mu neutrino is different from electro neutrino. Okay, this was also uh, one thing that was very important for him, no, this thing about the neutrinos. Okay, By, and then the one the point is that sometimes the people get confused because they say neutrinos, they don't have charge. And then why you detect neutrinos? And basically you not detect the heavy neutrinos, why you detect is the products of the neutrinos produced. Okay, and sometimes you need to be very careful what you, uh, uh, what it uh, contributes for that. And for, oh, sorry. And then when you say, for example, you have some interaction that you put uh, some neutrino, is scattered by some medium and then put the electron. This state here, it is what you usually label as the electron neutrino state. This means that, say, in all the reactions you say, all the uh, uh, cross sections you, you measure until now, you say that they, when you produce a, uh, a state that have electron neutrinos, you associate this as the electron neutrino. Okay? And then, uh, and this, what happened, they say, this is something that uh, probably you don't know, but it, it think you to search for uh, different effects in neutrinos is something very old, very, very old. In the beginning, what happened? You had these accelerators to produce, uh, about the, uh, produce part uh, heavy particles. And as a side effect, as a parasite experiment, you can make it, uh, you can extract from this, uh, you can extract uh, from this a uh, uh, pion beam, this pion beam, you can put, uh, you put a heat, uh, some target, he produces neutrinos, and then you have a neutrino beam. Then in the past, you have a lot of neutrino beams, but they are not fault to look at properties of neutrinos. They are something like uh, some side effect of other experiments, okay? Then you have a lot of history, and then what happened in the past is they say that uh, in general, what you have, these are very small experiments in very short distance, and then what you have, for example, in this case, where if you use some uh, reaction that produces electron neutrinos, uh, uh, sorry, that produces, oh, that produces, that have uh, electrons, and then at the same time you have electron neutrinos. And then if you, you detect these neutrinos, you can just see the same, uh, the same neutrino here because you see electrons this. This was what happened in all these experiments in the past, 
And then this gives very keen to say what is the retinotin, what is muonotin. Okay, you are very well, very well uh, quantify what is what the difference between the two. Okay. Okay. And this is something that was to, uh, was uh, spoken this morning. I'm going to repeat because this uh, this uh, this is a very interesting. This is a copy of some uh, slide that Kajita, that he wins the Nobel Prize in Neutrinos. He put here, a, uh, showed this in 98. This is 20 years ago. This is very interesting. So they made 20 years. And this is the original plot of the Super uh, uh, Professor uh, Andreas explained in the morning, I only want to say all this thing here, that is say what the, the effect you have here is a very big effect. You have like a 6.2 six standard deviation from uh, what is expected what you normally expect it is one, then it's a, it's a very big effect. And you can uh, think, uh, you can uh, get a guess of this effect, count this number of vendor here. For moons, here you have 20, uh, uh, 256 uh, events, here you have 139. You expect equal number for both, you see a completely different number here. And these are very strong, uh, inf uh, very strong evidence that the neutrinos uh, they change favor and the neutrinos are disappearing. In disappearing in what? These are some questions that you, need, you, uh, you want to ask, okay? After that, we have many experiments that see uh, neutrino oscillations. Here is uh, some, uh, uh, some example. No, the Kahneman experiment is a very nice because they use this experiment. This is a hard experiment in Japan, and then if you measure the plot of the, the date of the predicted number as a function of the distance divided by the energy, you see this profile here. This, uh, this, uh, this behavior here is not equal to one. If you have no oscillation, you expect to see something like this, but you see this behavior like this. Later, you have a, sorry. Later you have a very precise, a very precise uh, experiment, uh, the minus. You see very well, carry, uh, very well these oscillations. Also, you see in the double shoes, in the double shoes, sorry. And then all this experiment here, what they show? That you have your oscillation between electronotin from minotin in the solar, where Andrew is going to talk about tomorrow. Minotin to tau neutrino, this is a super common current, and it's okay. And electronotin to tau neutrino. This is that uh, today, you know, by different experiments in different situations, you have the same scenario, is playing all the oscillation effects at the same time. This is. I think you need to think about this is very unusual. If you think it's something like uh, seven years ago, this was not true. If you count how many solutions you had for solar neutrino problem, I think probably you have like 100 solutions. Every person can have some solution, some different thing. Uh, different physics, different thing, but give it the same effect in the solar neutrinos. Also for the others. What happened, they say, now we have a combination of, this, of the results. And this combination of results said that they say the most simple scenario that the neutrino have mass, this is the solution for all these problems. This is something very, it's something that uh, people are not expect. They expect, oh, maybe one experiment is because some, some, uh, some phenomenon. Another experiment is a different one. But most of the experiments, uh, all the, most of the experiments are, you can uh, interpret as uh, neutrino solution induced because neutrino have mass. And then, and the idea was that this was made by Ponte Corvo, this guy uh, on the right. And then what he proposed, let us say it's very simple, that the electron neutrino uh, have a combination of, a favor, uh, of the mass angle states. And here you can see very clearly this, this picture in a very graphical way. Because, for example, here is the, you have uh, different favors, electron, mu, and tau. And here we have the mass angle states. That the mass angle state is not uh, one combination of electron neutrino, moon to electron neutrino, but it's a linear combination of different favors. And because this, and then you can see the, what the effect of the neutrino station you see, you, you see after. Okay? Then, if you have this idea of a Ponte Corf, that the neutrinos are not mass angle states, are a linear combination of different states, then this uh, plot that I showed before was not correct in some sense. Why? Because you have the proto here, he produces a, a neutrino, but this neutrino here, what is he, what's the, he, the mass angle states, the well-defined states 
that they are very well uh, defining Lorentz pro properties are the mass eigenstates. Okay? This means if you wanted to have lossy propagation of these states, you should reduce the states in the mass basis. Okay? And then to do that, you need to do conditions. Yeah? You need to have coherence about, uh, about the states, and you need to have this linear combination. If you have these two conditions, you can make a computation like quantum mechanics. And then you state, after some time, a tree is given by this linear combination of these elements here is the proportion. How much of the electron neutrino is in the first state? How much is the electron in the second state? How much is the electron in the third state? Okay? All these parameters are here, you don't know. The mass of the states in principle you don't know. You should get this from transparency. You don't have a theory that say what's the masses or the mixed angles. You need to find this in this experiment. And then, sorry. And then, if you, if you have a neutrino oscillation, you can have the case, you begin with some neutrino that produce uh, electrons, and then, after there's some, some distance, these neutrinos produce muons. This is completely different, because what it is means that you violate the rapid number. And rapid number is a very well conserved uh, quantum number you have. Okay? In all the relations of neutrino uh, uh, scattering, rapid number is a very well con uh, conserved quantity. But if you have oscillations, sorry. If you have oscillations, you can have a neutrino that being here, here. Initially, you have a, a positron, and the end, you can have. Oh, uh, yeah. Here, is, uh, yeah. here, you can have a, a, moon, uh, a moon here. Then you violate the rapid number because of this. Okay. And then, this, this was, the, the, was said in the, in the morning. They say this gives the Nobel Prize in 2015 to Kajita and to Martin Odot. And then this was the first to discover in particle physics is a new phenomenon that you, you cannot explain in, 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 the model, in the standard mode of the part, elementary particles. It's a new phenomenon. You know how to quantify this as neutrino oscillations, but the source of why the neutrinos oscillate, why they meet, why they need this linear combination, you don't know. Okay? Then this is the first phenomenon you cannot explain in the standard model, and this the implication it's a, very, it's a very interesting coincidence that all these parents should, should, you can explain by one simple reason. The neutrinos have a mass. Okay? And then, what you can do now, I'm in Gaucho, then you can take a, a, a little break to see what you can do after you know that. And then, this is the question they say, can you have another type of neutrinos? And then, if you have another type, that means which type you have? What are the properties of these neutrinos? What the mass of these neutrinos? Okay, these are very fast. You can you can make in completely different uh, uh, directions. You can go for cosmology to look for uh, for these new states of neutrinos. You go for accelerators. I not talk about this because they are very heavy neutrino states. And we're going to talk about the very light neutrino states. Okay, why are you doing this? I want the very light neutrino states such that they are coherent in the uh, oscillation. You can make oscillations between them. We have a very heavy states, they don't oscillate. Okay? And then one very simple thing you can say, okay, you have a retinal neutrino. You have a retinal neutrino, mu neutrino, and tau neutrino. You can put, ah, let's put another neutrino, X. It's the same properties of the retinal mu and tau, and made another copy. But you cannot do this. You have an experiment that forbids that. Because uh, you have a experiment that you, if you count how many acidic neutrinos, how much neutrinos that have interactions, you cannot have more than three neutrinos. Okay? You should have no less than three and no more than three. You should have exactly three neutrinos. Okay? This experiment of fact, this came because when you made the collision of E minus E plus and to Z zero, and you see the anti, uh, the anti neutrino it can produce anti neutrinos you can count because you cannot see the neutrinos the neutrinos are invisible in the accelerator experiments but you can count how much the total width is and just count how much width you see if you see this the number that is left that in, in neutrinos is compatible with three but not to be compatible with two or no four this means you cannot have another state that write this this is forbidden okay and then, if it's not this, 
you, you, what you can do. Then you can, you can make something like this. Uh, this girl here can say, ah, okay, but this happened because the neutrino interacts with the Z bosons. What would happen if the neutrino don't interact? Okay? What, in this case, it can be a very clever idea because then you have no bound. Okay? But if you have no interactions, how you can know that you have this, you have this state that don't interact? How you can know a particle that don't interact? with anything, okay? Can be a clever idea or can be a very bad idea, okay? And then, this is, I, I, I like this picture, and then the sterile thing is this, is like these people, this, they are talking, they are going about between the other, they are interacting, but the sterile neutrino is in his old world, this is the phones that they don't, they don't interact with anything. This is what you wanted to see here. Uh, uh, this uh, slide is already present in the, in, the, in the page, you can see that. If you click this, sorry, if you click this here, you can see the history of the, uh, the poltergeist experiment. What is the poltergeist experiment that I told you uh, before? Poltergeist was the first experiment that detected neutrinos. Why they call poltergeist? Because uh, the, uh, the, all the predictions that you have for neutrinos, that you, you, the, all the people expect you never detect neutrinos. And because as an internal joke, they call the experiment the Boltergeist experiment. Okay? Now I'm going to do something even more, uh, 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 a worse thing. I'm going to, to want you to detect a neutrino that don't have interactions. How you can do that? Okay? Then I'm going to help you from some colleague in North America. This is the group that made the original Boltergeist experiment. I don't know who is Davis or not. I don't know if uh, Andrea knows who is Davis, the original. I don't know. Okay. Here is, is really the Bolter Gas experiment, but if you really click there in the previous link, you can see the illustration of this experiment, all the things they did, okay? And then what you're going to see is here. The point is here. I want you to detect a neutrino that don't have interactions. This is what we call a sterile neutrino. And then are you going to help of this lady here? It's a Janet Conrad. She's a MIT experimental physicist in the United States. And then why the disconnect of the neutrinos? She's searching for sterile neutrinos. Okay? And then has some connection, I find it this way. She was the model of because uh, one they made it is a new reboot of the Ghostbuster movie. They made the movie only with the girls. Okay? And one of the girls. The, what, how a uh, scientist behave, what the scientist said, to, they inspire about what, is, uh, what is she get, why is, is she talk, what is they, they get inspiration from what uh, she get. She has many toys in her office, the people said, and they take what these toys to put in the, in the movie. And this movie here is about the Ghostbusters. What the Ghostbusters are searching for? Uh, ghosts. Okay? Then, this lady that's looking for a sterile neutrino is working for a particle that's not more a poltergeist, it's some even worse than a poltergeist, is a particle that don't have interactions. Then, how you can see this? Okay? Uh, then, what happened, the first round of this history is given by these so-called uh, short baseline experiments. And then, uh, just uh, I'll explain more about this. Uh, uh, in the United States, was made some experiments of well, ANCD, link situated neutrino detector. And this made, experiment made, uh, uh, was, made, uh, was made something like this. You have uh, mostly you have pions. This produce mu neutrinos and almost no electron neutrinos. And then you wanted to see if you have a solar wire if you can get electron neutrinos, okay? This is not exactly, uh, not to put no Z electron neutrinos because this here can, this can produce a mu and a mu can produce some anti electron neutrinos, okay? Then you have some contamination here. Then what the experiments measure in the experiment, this is what the, this plot here. This is the number of the events as a function of the distance from the source divided by the neutrino energy. In, sorry. In, oh, in, no, in meters per MeV. 
And this is what they have here. This, they have some uh, contamination from different process that give the same signal as electron. They are counting, what they are counting? They are not counting electron neutrinos. You cannot see electron neutrinos, they are counting electrons. But if you count electrons and you don't know the source, you need, you need to account for all the sources of the uh, electrons that you have in your experiment. Okay? Then they, sorry, I'm, I mean, some problem with this. Uh, they have some uh, background from different sources. They also they have some contamination here. And this is the data. The data is not compatible with these two things here. They need to put some additional sources here. And this additional source, what this means, that you have some addition of this part of blue here that you cannot predict in the original experiment. And this is a function of the distance divided by energy. Okay? This is exactly the same behavior and it gave in the oscillation probability that uh, you were showing uh, this in this morning. If you have a conversion probability from mu neutrino to electron neutrino, you have some coefficient here, the amplitude, you have some phase here, the, uh, the square mass difference, the distance L, and the energy of the neutrino. This means that uh, for this distance here, if you have this neutrino oscillation, you can get information about the amplitude and about this mass difference here. Okay? And then, when the people put this out thing together, they get this number here. It's a very big number. This mass difference is 0.110 electron-volt per square. The experiments that uh, uh, André Gouveia talked in the morning, they talk about two experiments. Atmospheric experiments. They see some immune, disa uh, uh, immune uh, disappearance. You can understand this if this mass difference is the order of 2.4 in a minus three electron volt quadrat. And tomorrow, he is going to talk about it, solar neutrinos. And also Kernand. Kernand, this experiment that I showed before here, I'm going to, I, I know this is not good, but I'm going to go back here. Is this experiment here? Is a, oops. Is a reactor is a reactor experiment. If you're going to put this here, this uh, L over here, if you measure these numbers here, you have here a uh, L over e, this is kilometer by MeV. And then also here you have a kilometer by MeV is the order of a kilometer by GV. Here in this scale here. It's a compl completely different scale. It's meters by MeV. This means that what it is means that is the point is uh, the same. Yeah, the following thing. For the atmospheric neutrinos, to have oscillation, you need to cross all the Earth. Okay? This means that the neutrinos produce here, they oscillate to there. This means this can be, this is going to see. A mass difference, the order of 2.4 pain minus 3 electron volt per square. Okay? This number here, okay, if for solar neutrinos or for Kerman, you, you need to have another mass difference, completely different mass difference, the order of 7.5 pain minus 5 electron volt per square. 7, I think. Okay. You know what this means? This number here, if it is mass difference, this very small 10 minus 3, 10 minus 5 numbers, this means that the, the phase here that you have here is very small. This means to have oscillation, you need to have a distance in energy very big. Okay? But now, if the, uh, because here, ah, I can't say the, Here, what they're happy to say, here the distance is very small, meters by MeV. This means 
to have this effect here, this phase should be very big. And to have this number here, this delta, this mass difference should be of the order 0.110 over the total air. And this number is completely different from this number from atmospheric neutrinos, and it's completely different from the solar. What it is means something like this. If you wanted to explain at the same time what happened in the atmospheric neutrinos, same time what happened in the solar neutrinos, you cannot explain this. Because this mass difference here, this means this this that must be too small. This means the, this argument here is too small. It's in a very big distance. It's like uh, Andre talked before. For atmospheric neutrinos, for to have oscillation, you need to have at least uh, uh, 1,000 kilometers or even larger for solar neutrinos. Okay, uh, for current. Okay, uh, and then this means that it, they say that uh, this here you cannot explain this number here, and then what it is. Uh, let me know what is this mass distance, what is this number, this expression coming here? This expression came from the expression from Ponte Corvo. What did Ponte Corvo said? If you have a mu neutrino, you can make that some linear combination, the one state, two state, the three state. But if it is mass difference, it could be the difference from this and from this, what it is means is that you need a new mass difference. To have a new mass difference, what you need to mean, you need to con continue this line here. You need to have some additional state here. Mu 4, mu, mu 4. OK. If you want to explain in the same way, you can say, OK, but maybe this can be some different phenomena. This, uh, this is OK. It can be a different phenomena. But want, if you wanted to take the simplest model to explain this oscillation, let's take that what you make, you, add, you put uh, some additional thing, and this additional thing cannot be active, it cannot interact, because you have this bond, I, I said here, this bond here, you cannot have some additional thing that interact, then this additional thing should be sterile, so it cannot interact. Okay, yes? Can you repeat, sorry? Yeah, you should be careful about that. When you put this new state here, because you can have some, uh, you can have some situations like you completely destroy this pattern there. You should add it in such a way that you not destroy this pattern. This is a very interesting thing. You need to be very careful about that. You can make very easy mistakes in such a way you completely destroy this. You don't see anything. Okay. Uh, one thing, for example, you, you can see uh, uh, one thing to say, if you take this mass difference here, this big number here, and you put in atmospheric neutrinos, you can see that the, the, uh, the distance that the neutrinos you oscillate is very short, like uh, 50 kilometers. This means, remember this plot that he made for the neutrinos coming from uh, going down, you need to see oscillations. You don't see oscillation. This gives some hint that maybe you can have this, but you need to be very careful. Okay, this will, this will be a very important point for this. Okay. Now, uh, also you have other evidence. The other case came from some completely different experiment. What is the completely different experiment? It's a Hayato experiment. Okay. It's a Hayato experiment. It's a series of Hayato experiments. And what happened that, say, uh, we have a change in the prediction of these experiments in, in, the, in the last five years. And then you can understand what happened with the people who made this plot here. This is the hedge between what you, you, you get in the experiment divided by what you get in the, experiment, in the prediction. And if you see this number here, here for zero distance, this is the distance, is one. But I mean, when you increase the distance, you begin to see some different pattern here, the old one. What it is means, and this distance is very short. Here, here, 10 meters, 100 meters, is very short distance, okay? Then what happened, they say, it seems that you, I'm, I'm seeing a new uh, phenomenon that only is appearing in very short uh, distance, okay? And this is not, in principle, is not uh, different from the other that has seen very long distance, okay? 
Diz, tu experimento seria? Que é completamente diferente. Diz, a sereita experimento para paio. E diz, para a reata experimento completamente diferente. E eu disse, a parte de mim não tínhamos ganho do reto, não tínhamos. E eu disse, oh, sorry. E eu disse, a reto não tínhamos, a survival of a reto não tínhamos. Isso é completamente diferente. É, oscillation pattern, and you see, you see difference between what you expect from the experiment and what you get, uh, what you get in theory and what you get in the experiment. Okay? What you can understand now, know your question the st about this thing, you need to put this additional thing in such a way you not to destroy the information you had before. Okay? Then how you can do this? This is uh, a graphical way to put this information. This thing is already this. Let's explain this. I have a lot of information here. This is the uh, mass angle states. And then I'm going to put it, say, here is not just something, the, something changing the thing. Before you put, ah, let's talk about a red immune tau neutrinos. Uh, one thing I think you need to change now, the red immune neutrinos was a very uh, good thing to characterize the interaction of the neutrinos. But it's not to do to realize what the properties of the neutrinos are. The properties are not given by the favor states, but they're given by the mass angle states. First point, the favor, the favor, angle, the favor states, they don't have a well-defined uh, they're, they're not defining some uh, uh, classification. To get this, you need to be mass angle states, okay? And then, and the mass, it does say you can get is, uh, uh, the mass defines what a particle is, okay? And then, this, here you can put some labels like it. the lightest neutrino is new one, the second one is new two, new three, and new four. Okay? And then this color here has another meaning, another information. What information you have here? Something like this. You know that now that neutrinos, one electron neutrino is not in the state one. The electron neutrino is not in state two. It's some combination. How you quantify this combination? By this color here. The green here say how much, oh, sorry, how much electron neutrinos you have in the light state. Uh, the blue, uh, the orange here, they say how much mean neutrinos you have in the light state, and, and so on. Okay? In this way, and this here is not a handle colors. This color is exactly the colors, the quantity of these quantities that you need to spray in the solar neutrino and the solar neutrino. Okay? And then I put now some additional sterile neutrino. What happens with this additional sterile neutrino? If you see here, what is sterile neutrino here? You cannot see. It is very small. This will what, what answer your question. It's a very small perturbation in this state here. Most of this st sterile state is in the heavy state here. Okay? And this is the question that say, you say, how I can see a neutrino that I cannot detect? I cannot see this neutrino. It's the same way that I cannot see a retin neutrino. I don't, I don't see a retin neutrino. What I see is the neutrino interact and produce a retin. Because this property, I, because this I can see is the right neutrino. Not see in the sense, but I can see the effects of the sterile neutrino. Why I can see this effect of sterile neutrino? Because it has this very small proportion here. What this means that you have it. You can have it, uh, the heavy state here. They have a very small proportion of electronutinos, a very small proportion of mu neutrinos. Okay? If you have this mass, and remember the figure they say, what is the main parameter that control how fast the neutrinos oscillate? Is the mass of the neutrinos or the mass difference of the neutrinos? It means the bigger the mass difference, the faster he oscillates. The smaller the mass difference, the smaller he oscillates. Okay? And the amplitude is given by this box here. What this means is that they say the one state has most of the electron neutrinos. Okay? This state here, you have uh, some uh, equal numbers of mu and tau neutrinos. Because this effect here, that you have a very big effect of atmospheric neutrinos. You have a strong uh, uh, mixing between the uh, orange and this uh, purple color here. Okay? And, but you still have some very small portion here. Now let's make it say, you can make all this scheme here. This is the simplest one. It's called T plus one. Why T plus one? You have three neutrinos that are mostly active, that are not active completely, mostly active. 
and to have some addition of tin here, because this you, you call T plus one. Okay? And yes? Why? No. No, what did I say? What interact is the fraction of the retinal tin that is the heavy state. This means that if you put a new four against a target, okay, you don't, you, 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 that's what you can happy to say, the proportion that is sterile, you don't see any interaction, but the other proportion, you can see the interaction, okay? This means that interaction of this new four with so any state, the, any state, in oh, sorry, in proportional to the, this, this number here. I, I forgot to say something, for, uh, to say, the sum here is equal to one. What it is means that say this is a very like, big proportion of one, and this this is a small one is more one, and here mostly here is mostly serenity. Okay, this means because you have unitarity, the sum of the components of each state should be, the, the the sum square should be equal to one. Okay, and then if you make the now I know I wanted to explain you have the data before the experimental information. Here you have this oh sorry. You have this experimental information. Now I want you to explain some model. How you explain that? You're gonna to do two neutrinos like this, very small D. You need to do to be four neutrinos. And then let's make some way. I want to make an experiment. Uh, no, I want to make in the limit, which my experiment is a very short distance. Okay? It's not zero, but very short. If you do this, if you I don't do the possibility, the probability is very long, it's very big. Uh, 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 something like four lines, but if you made this approximation, it became very simple. Why is this? Because you need to have a very strong oscillations at a very short distance. This mass, dif this is scale here, is proportional to the mass of the neutrino. This means that the difference between the neutrino one and neutrino two is very small number. In neutrino two, it is very small number, but the difference between these states and this is very big one. Okay. If we made the probability, for, for example, mu neutrino uh, converts to electron neutrino, you give this expression here. This is interesting. If you made a mode of two neutrinos, you get this expression here. But if you made a mode of four neutrinos in one state is much heavier than the other, you get it the same. Okay? This one can be some exercise that's going to uh, ask for you to do this. Yeah? No, is there four to Yeah, this is a very good question, because what happened, the, uh, the mass difference between one and two is a very small number. If you mean short, very short in scales, this, you will not see no oscillation. You can put this phase, uh, the, the different phase here, you can put zero, okay? If you made for mu to a retro new conversion, there's exactly the same signal of the experiment NSC, you can see the expression here. Now you have made for the mu survival, you give this number here. Is some, we see something like a very, so, something I want to keep in mind. The mass difference is the same, but the amplitude is different. Okay? But then it's not completely different. What is going to happen is that, say, this uh, amplitude here of the mu to electric conversion, it be proportional to what? This is how much the mean neutrino here oscillates to this state here. This means it could be proportional to the, this green part, this, uh, sorry, the orange part here, and to the green part here. Okay? I, I found exactly the same co uh, color signal here. This is how much the mean neutrino have in the highest state here. You cannot see much, is it a green part there? And how much, uh, uh, here is the uh, orange, how much the electron means in the high state? Oops. Sorry. Now let's make the amplitude for the mean survival probability. If you do the same computation, you get some number, some different amplitude here. It's proportional to move four only. And if you make the electron mean survival, it's the same amplitude proportional to F4. This is something very interesting now. You have three completely different amplitudes, to do, can be completely different numbers. But because you are working in this model that you have three neutrinos plus one, instead you have three independent parameters, you only have two parameters. 
move for and move for. What it is implies, they are not independent. They are related. If we make this, this is going to be one to exercise for you to, I, I have to do. If you put this number here, you can get the expression that the moon erectile amplitude conversion is proportional to the moon survival amplitude into erectile survival amplitude. This is very interesting because now you can make a very uh, test of this model. If you see how much is the amplitude of the moon survival, how much is the amplitude of the erectile survival, by this model, you can get the information about how much is the conversion mu to erectile. Okay? This is uh, something to be interesting. Uh -huh. Now, I need to uh, put some information that, uh, uh, for, to explain what you're having next. Uh, most of the information I said here is about oscillation that happens most in the vacuum. What I mean to say, it's not like atmospheric neutrinos that the neutrinos cross out the Earth, but the experiments that they are very short distance. Most of them are in vacuum. Okay? But the neutrinos have another very interesting property that was discovered in eight, in eight seats. That the neutrinos, they oscillate in a different way when they cross inside the Earth, inside any material media. Okay? How you can understand this? You can make a, like, this an analogy, some model that what happened with neutrinos. I wanted to give you this mode for you. Imagine that you have a pen wave coming some, it's called, uh, you have some material, let's say here. Here is some, uh, some direct material. You have a pen wave collided here. And because I wanted to describe what happened with this pen wave collided with this material. And what you do, the physicists do in the first approximation, if you want to describe any model, you will see a model oscillator. Then I'm going to use this system here as a correction of harmonic oscillators. Then I have a burning wave, it's colliding with some. Uh, and all the material I'm going to describe as harmonic oscillators. This is a uh, electric, you have, if you have a burning wave, you have an electrical field and magnetic field. The electric field is, 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 time, is, uh, is not constant time. When you have this electric field, it's an external force. This means that it is harmonic oscillators can be no oscillate. It's what you solve it when you make it in the classical mechanics in the first course. Like you solve it, you put some classical or uh, some, uh, some harmonic oscillator by some external force. And then what happens? Okay? Then what happens? They say, we put, sorry, when you put this uh, uh, harmonic oscillator by some external force that is variable, what happens in uh, this is. Uh, what you, what you describe your, mo your, your model of the, of the direct medium is uh, this uh, oscillator. Is, uh, he begins to oscillate. And if you remember from electromagnetism, anything that has acceleration, what he produces? He produces radiation. Okay? And then this radiation, you make some electromagnetic wave. Okay? Now, what you do? This is some exercise. I can give you the link for you. It's very interesting. If you make some electromagnetic wave collide with some linear, uh, some direct medium, and you compute the electromagnetic wave produced, and you combine these two things, these two waves, the initial one, and they produced by the uh, ammonia oscillator, you can understand these two things, the initial one, and what is produced in your media, as the original, uh, 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 original uh, wave, if we put it in a factual interest of the media. Okay? This means that you can, have, uh, you can have some thick explanation what is the refraction media because it's the effect of the, uh, your electromagnetic wave colliding the medium. He uh, accelerated the, uh, the oscillator. The oscillator uh, produces electromagnetic waves and to combine this, it's like you have the light refraction. This phenomenon here, you see this uh, bend here, is because this, the media is producing Oh, sorry, here is wrong, sorry. This C is, is, is wrong. The velocity in the, of the automatic wave in the media in some, uh, is given by C by divided by N, or whereas N is the refraction index. This means that the, uh, the wave is, is probably not with the velocity of the light, but it's, it's a, a bit small, okay? Then what is the analogy that I'm going to do is something like this. What it is means, remember, for the automatic wave, you have the energy square 
is equal to moment square c square. The mass here for a electromagnetic wave is zero. Here under the velocity of the light. This means that effect when you have electromagnetic wave in some media is equivalent like the media makes the light to behave like you have something like it, some additional mass. Because this interaction with the day. You can describe this by some additional mass. And this additional mass is given because you can interpret some refractive interest of the electromagnetic wave. Okay? This means that the light, the light that you put in some uh, uh, geovet medium uh, has an effect, and this effect makes the light when you propagate inside this media is different than propagating vacuum. Okay? Now let's make the same thing with neutrino. But for neutrino, what do you have? Instead of having a, a, a geovet medium, I'm going to have the vacuum. Okay? Because in quantum field theory, when, even when you have a vacuum, all the particles passing through some medium have some effect of the vacuum that you have in, 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 in some medium. Okay? And then what is going to happen is something very similar. What happened is, say, the neutrino run past some media, he having the interaction of the, all the, 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 uh, the, 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 the state, uh, all, uh, all the state of this vacuum. And the effective way what is going to happen is that the electron neutrino has like a, some in, uh, refractive interest, and the mean will have to, uh, some refractive interest and tau neutrino. But what is the difference between neutrinos and light? How much light do you have in nature? You only have one light. You don't have two things. But for neutrinos, you have three different types. And because the electron neutrinos have interaction different from mu neutrinos and tau neutrinos, what it is means is that when the neutrino propagate in a media, what happens is that the media itself it changes the oscillation of the neutrinos. Only because the electron neutrinos interact in a different way of the mu and tau neutrinos. Remember, uh, for example, one of the things you can have, for example, Uh, you can have interaction of electron neutrinos with these electrons, with electrons. These are a charge current interaction, but also you can have something like this. This is different from this, if you use the rules of the uh, quantum field theory. This means that the electron neutrino interacts in different way of the mu neutrino. And because this is, this is what made the effect of the, of the refraction index of the neutrino, this means that the, the refraction index of the neutrino, or the electron neutrino, the mu neutrino, is going to be different. And because this refraction index is going to be different, what happens? They say you can translate some kind of so-called matter potential. This matter potential is proportional to the how much electrons you have in the media and how much neutrons you have in the media. What this means, let's say, depending on uh, how much is the electrons or how much neutrons you have in the media, the neutrino behaves in a different way. Okay? This means that if neutrino passes through some media, you have a lot of electrons, you have one, uh, one effect. If you have a lot of neutrons, you're going to have another effect. Okay? And then, by the way, I'm going to put here the line. The stellar neutrino don't have any interaction. What this means, then, the effect of the stellar neutrino in the media is you don't have. What, is some, what you can have, the, and this effect here, of this, have this uh, fractal interest, you can understand in, in, the same, in some, my, my analogy something like this. For the magnetic wave, because when you hand the media, you have a fractal interest for the light, and this made it like a effective because this means that the light is, uh, maybe I can be more clear of that there. The velocity of any particle you can give by beta per meter, this V sub C, okay? and this you can write this is one of N, the effect interest, okay? But beta, at the same way, what is beta by definition is the momentum divided by the energy. This means that if the refraction is different from one, you change the direction here, okay? And if you change the direction here, it's, it's a given way to say that the particle has some effective mass. This is the reason why the light, when it's traveling inside the media, not traveling the velocity of the light, but it's slower, okay? In the same way, the velocity of the neutrino in media, it can be different. 
because they have a refraction here. This means the, the relation between the momentum and the energy for neutrinos is different in vacuum in matter. Okay? This was the idea given by these three uh, gentlemen, Overstein, that is um, American, and Mikhail F. Ismino is a Russian, not related with the vodka. And then this is uh, the MSW effect, and they made it uh, around the time eight seats. Okay? And this is a very interesting property, because now what happened is say, say, if the neutrinos, property of neutrinos change when they cross the matter, you can use this information to your favor. You can make, it, you can think some experiment that the neutrinos cross the matter, and then you can get different properties of neutrinos. Okay? Then I'm going to give them uh, I uh, uh, assemble this. Let's make uh, maybe I'm talking too fast. I, I, in general, I talk too fast. I'm going to be more uh, the thing. Let's face what I want to say here. First thing, if you have a red wave in any some direct medium, the red wave is changing velocity. It's going to uh, travel some velocity smaller than C because the refraction is it's going to be smaller velocity. Okay. Because the refraction ends. Now I'm mean, thinking that because this, why you can't understand this? Because the red wave when is in the media, he excited the media, and this produces another red wave. It can combine because the original one and the second one, you change the the, uh, the red wave, and then you can understand this as refraction ends. You can make this computation. It just works. It's very nice. Okay. I think you have in the final book, no? And then the other person also can find this information. In the same way for neutrinos, such neutrinos don't need a media because we have the vacuum of the quantum field theory. The value itself can change the properties of the neutrinos. This means that only in the cross of media, because the media has some uh, density, has some uh, electrons or neutrons or protons in the media, it changes the properties of the neutrinos. Okay? This is the second point I want to get you in mind. And because these properties can discriminate between neutrinos, now it's a very interesting point. Because now I can discriminate the different type of physics if I send a beam of neutrinos inside the Earth or in the, in the vacuum. If the parameters are the same, the result will be different. This is very interesting. Okay? And now is the question I said in the beginning. Why you can see sterile neutrinos? You cannot see sterile neutrinos. And some of you cannot see electron neutrinos. What you can see, if you have sterile neutrinos and, and you send this, a neutrino beam of mu neutrinos, in the matter, because it's the right neutrino, it changes the properties of the other neutrinos. It's an indirect effect. You not see the effect of the stellar neutrino, but you see the effect of the stellar neutrino made in the oscillation of the other neutrinos. It's an indirect effect. Okay? I will not give time to explain that. I, uh, uh, Professor, uh, and they're going to speak much better tomorrow, but there's something very interesting effect. This is, uh, I want to give some examples, but not saying all the details. It's a, a statement of the energy of the neutrino. It's very interesting. Because now you can have some specific energy, what is the effect is very big. Because this is called so called resonance. Then I'm going to, uh, uh, I'll bet, uh, uh, Professor and there share many histories. I'm going to share some histories that I hear about uh, from Izminov. And when you read the original paper by Izminov, and Mikhail F. Izminov, you, this, this effect can make a resonance. You can have a very strong effect. The same type of resonance you see in, when you make the resonance in, 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 in other systems. But if you read the paper, the resonance name, the resonance not be in any place. Why? The Hefe said, this cannot be a resonance. I, I only accept it to publish the paper if you remove all the, in the other places the number resonance. This means that the paper about the resonance don't have the name resonance in any place. Okay? The really said it, it cannot understand why you have this resonance, and then the name removes all the things. And then, if you read the paper, the paper is not about the neutrino evolution in matter. It's not this. It's how to solve a differential equation. This is the thing. This is very funny. Now, but it's a, at that time, it was very frustrating for the both, no? But this is what they, they really accept. They are solving a differential equation of a particle traveling in the media. Okay? Not, they are not solving a problem of neutrino in the media. A different equation. Okay? Uh, oh. 
And then uh, they say about the ice cube. Ice, ice cube is a very interesting experiment for many different ways. I'm not going to talk about Braza. Braza is a, not a topic for another professor. And then I'm going to talk about what is the, the ice cube. Ice cube is an experiment in Antarctica. Why it disappear here? So, uh, and you correct. Oh, this experiment, what did they make? They made the strings that they put in the ice. They burn the ice with uh, hot water. Then they put the strings. As soon as they, they put the strings, the water frozen, and then they are in the ice. Okay? They made the experiment there because uh, the properties of the ice in principle are very clean material. Okay? And they can make some very big repair. I think this here, the size of this, from this part here to this part here, I think it's two times the Eiffel Tower in, in Paris. If you want, you see the photo of Eiffel Tower in, in Paris, this is, two, uh, I think, two times bigger, okay? And the size also, this is like one kilometer square. It's one of the biggest neutrino detectors we have here, okay? And the, the difference between, for example, this is thing and this is thing is 100 meters. This is a new, a real neutrino event. It's a neutrino event that has a size of something like 500 meters. It's a very big event. And then, what did people discover in the past? This is atmospheric neutrino detector. Okay? It was not made to make atmospheric neutrinos. And the main goal, the main goal is to say atmospheric neutrinos. But the first, uh, one of the first, uh, in the first years, the more important result was about the atmospheric neutrino detector. And then, you can, uh, you can have some information like this. If you have a certain, ah, uh, you're too small. If you have a sterile neutrino, it has something very interesting. If you have, uh, let's remember, okay. If you remember the oscillation probability in vacuum, the oscillation probability of, of the neutrino is something like this. What happens if the energy is infinite? If the energy is infinite, this go. Oh, sorry. Sorry. So, 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 sorry. Oh. One minus. If the energy is infinite, this argument is zero. If it is zero, the probability is one. This means that if you're in the vacuum, for very high energy, you expect to see no oscillations. Your oscillations die when you increase the energy. Okay? But then, if you have sterile neutrino, some very funny thing happen. And then, this is not MSW effect. So it's a matter effect, but not MSW effect. It's the effect of the, uh, of the, of the, of the, of the neutrino cross in the Earth. Then, when neutrino cross all the Earth, not all the neutrinos, but this is, uh, if you can choose more, but this is anti mu neutrino. I'm going to put here anti mu neutrino, I'm going to be uh, compatible. Anti mu neutrino, anti mu neutrino. If you made, when you include sterile, if you don't have sterile neutrino, what happened? This is a very high energy. If you see here the label, this is GV, here is 100 GV, hey, 1000 GV. He is uh, uh, 10 and 4, 10 and 5. Very high energy. It's one of the higher neutrino detectors. Uh, in, uh, sorry. It's the experiments of neutrinos that detect neutrinos with very high energy. Okay? Then, if you do a very big, if you put this mass difference here, and the energy of this 100 GV, this argument is going to be zero. You see no oscillations. But if you have a sterile neutrino, what happened? It's because the neutrino won't enter in the matter. It behaves different. What is going to happen that for some specific energy, well, here is one, but once it approaches this 1,000 GV here, the probability, of this, this is the same probability, the probability of the survival goes to zero. What this means, for some specific energy, the neutrino completely converts to something else. Okay? Ice cube. It's a very good experiment to see moons. 
This means that you can, see, you can test this parameter looking for how, if you have, suddenly you have the spectrum of the neutrinos, and suddenly you see a hole. You have no events there. Okay? The situation is not so simple. Why? Because uh, you cannot uh, disconnect neutrinos coming from the other side. This means that you only have not neutrinos coming from the other side, but you have it from one of the direction. This means the effect is not exactly as deep as this, but it's, it's attenuate. And then it's very interesting because here in this point, uh, this amplitude here is the, oh, this gives the phase, this gives the amplitude. For this parameter here, this size here, this is the amplitude. Okay? What happens when you have this effect of the when you didn't cause the matter? The amplitude grows very fast and becomes equal to one. This is uh, a uh, very big number. Okay? This means that if you have some neutrino that in vacuum it should oscillate of a very small amplitude, in matter it's going to oscillate a very big amplitude. This is very interesting. You can use the matter to amplify the neutrino. Okay? But if you cause too much matter, you suppress the oscillation and then you, you begin back to one. Then you have to be a very special region to see this effect. Okay? If you use this information, then this, uh, the matter effect, because you have a stellar neutrino, you can get this uh, here. Ah, it disappears. Sorry, it disappeared the label here. This is the mass difference. Here is the amp this amplitude here. This green here is the limit that you have in all the experiments that are in the vacuum. If you include the experiment that is in the matter, you can exclude all this region to the side here. It's a very interesting. If you made a neutrino in sending it across in the Earth, you can be, in this case, a factor 10 bigger than the certificate for the mid angles. Okay? This is the bigger thing that you can do. Okay? And then, what does it mean here? This is, uh, this is some information, I, I, I think it's the first time I show here. What, this is payment amounts using the information that you have from the experiments. What it means? That, say, all the values at the right of this curve here are excluded by the experiment. These are excluded by the experiments that are in the vacuum, and these are excluded by experiments that are in the inside of the matter. What it means? That this, this number here should be at maximum 10 to minus 1. This is compatible with what? This here. It's a very small number. Okay? This, is then, this picture here is not a handle picture with uh, colorful. You have a lot of physical information. This was an invention by Sminov. At least I know this expression. But they have some improved by Kaiser. No, Kaiser, yeah, Kaiser. No, no, Kaiser, no, um, Parker. Parker is some information about something very interesting. Remember here, here is not a straight line, but it's curve here. Why is curve? Something that I think nobody talks until now is about the neutrinos can have some very interesting property. Can have the neutrinos and anti-neutrinos behave in a different way. If you have this, instead of having this behavior here, you can have this behavior. What this means, I can say something like this, very interesting. It's not all time to do this, but probably it could be all time when you're doing something, you can see in the news or in articles, that this is a picture, sorry, this is a picture for, in the past you say, neutrinos and anti-neutrinos. But now you need to be very precise what you mean by that. What you mean to say, maybe if the neutrinos behave different from the anti-neutrinos, this means that it is, the scheme of the masses is different for neutrinos and for antineutrinos. This is very interesting information. And how you can get this information? Because this is not a state, it's not a state right here, but it's curved here. This means here, this is for neutrino, it is for antineutrino. The effect is not big, it's very small, but it can have some difference. This means that in the future, when you, uh, future, a person talk, give a talk about neutrinos, probably in some years, hopefully, in very short, in our lifetime, <laughs> you can get information. Ah, no, this is for neutrinos. Oh, no, this is for antineutrinos. The picture is going to be different. Okay? The behavior of the neutrino or antineutrino 
with the mice and the states, it will be different. Because the, this effect is so-called CP variation. You see CP variation a lot in quarks, but you don't see yet in neutrinos. There are some hints, but you don't you know yet if you have CP variation or not. How much time I have? I think I pass. OK. Uh, OK. Then let's make a summary. You have oscillations because mu neutrinos converge to electron neutrinos. But when you make the atmospheric neutrino detector, you don't see oscillation of mu neutrinos to mu neutrinos. They, they still stay together. And then, but now you go back here, maybe it can be a puzzle, because if you have oscillation of the mu neutrino to the neutrino, but you don't see oscillation of the mu neutrino to this, maybe you, it's more than being a problem. OK? And this is a big problem. This is it's a very uh, complicated plot. There are a lot of information here, but I want to do it two points. This is the mass difference between 10 to minus 1 electron volt to 10 electron volt. This is the amplitude. This means how much mu neutrino is the heavy state. And then this is the summary. It's not the update summary. We have another update that was two weeks ago. It is not the update. But it's the best update that is the thing. This update of all information you have about neutrinos related with stellar neutrinos. OK? Not including two weeks ago about the results, not in that information. And then what you get here? Uh, all experiments that you see original mu neutrino, and you ask the question, the mu neutrino survive or he disappear? The question is negative. Always the mu neutrino survive. You see no effects of the mu neutrino disappearance. What it is means, this is this bad curve here, you exclude all the parameter experiment of the light of this, this uh, all the parameter experiment here is excluded. Okay? But now you have the NECD. The NECD see a mean to a electronic appearance. The high autonomy see also some electronic disappearance. If you put all this information together, what you get is this red curve here. Then what happened? You have experiments that see a positive signal of neutrino oscillation that are in the region only you don't see in the other experiments. This is a puzzle. I do not have the answer, not as I say. But then something more to complicate things. This is the stats I think the, maybe one year ago. This is uh, the only year part, sorry for that. There's a more updated part. But this is, uh, for my purposes, is sufficient. That I repeated the information. This is a very key, to be very clear. In the sterile neutrino model, you see experiments, they don't see any oscillation. This means that all this region here to right of the back curve here is excluded. At the same time, you see electron neutrino appearance that you can explain if the neutrino parameters are in this region, this region, this region, this region here. Here is some contradiction between the two. OK? Then, to make the things worst, uh, two weeks ago, I have the results of mini boom. Mini boom is another experiment. It's the same, it's the, in the same sense, it's pine to mu in trying to see electron neutrinos. What is the difference between NACD and this experiment? The NCD experiment uses a very low energy beam of the pion. The mini boom is a very high energy uh, beam of the pions. OK? What they wanted to see, the energy is different. The distance is different. But the L over E of NCD is equal to L over E of the mini boom. This means if what the NCD see is a mistake, the two results should be different. If it's oscillation and it's oscillation induced by mass, if you're going to see an experiment with the same L over E, you should see the same thing. OK? This is a very, you see, it's like this, it's not a linear proportion. It's a confusing. Sometimes you have some result. Or I'm going to say what is the answer today. Oh, two weeks ago. <laughs> the answer is that. 
You see some illustration? In NCD, that is the green curve here, as a function of distance of L, you see some illustration in the mini boom for neutrinos and antineutrinos. This uh, neutrinos is the red, antineutrinos is the blue, and both, in principle, look like the same. Look, the distance is different, the energy is different, but the LOV is equal. If this oscillation, they should have the same behavior. This look like it has the same behavior, okay? But something interesting, why this is so, this is happening since this NCD was being first in 92, and 92, okay? Probably before you are born. Probably most of you are born after this date, okay? What happened? See the scale here. The probability at the maximum is 1%. What it means, you want to see 1% effect of your mu neutrino, that you don't know much about how it affects this neutrino, convert to the neutrino. And you, need to, you are going to see the retin the, uh, You don't see the neutrino, you see the retons. If you ask your experimental uh, physicist to detect muons, it's very easy. To detect retons, it's separate from pi zeros or from photons, it's a nightmare. This is the problem. You want to see some effect that is in electrons, and the effect is maximum 1%. This is the thing. Okay? Then, since 92, you still think about what is going on, you say. But, uh, mini boom result in 2018 gives you 4.5 sigmas. If you remember from your statistics course that you made in the undergraduate or in graduate, if you have a five sigma effect, it's a discovery. It's not a hint anymore, it's a discovery. But remember, I need to be very clear. This can be a 5.6 sigma effect, but the experiments, they don't see any oscillations. It's a puzzle. Okay? And now, this is the timing. I think the correct time for the younger people to think about what is going, what is going to be going on. The first thing. Uh, you have made some experiment about mu neutrinos. Okay? Some of these experiments are very old. The other are new. And the new ones are in the matter, not in vacuum. Okay? The experiment is completely different. Okay? One is an accelerator and the other atmospheric neutrinos. Okay? What can be this? I, know, I don't know the answer. Nobody knows. If you know, you can go to Sweden. Ma'am. Then. What I can say, at least to be honest with you, you have a strong hint. I don't say discover because discover is five sigma, but it's affected 5.65. You can discuss is how you made this analysis that is 5.6 sigma, not the stuff. You need to trust in some of these parameters. And then, but if you believe this story, strong hint of stellar things in mean boon, and a small hint in NCD autonomy. But you have a conflict. A mean disappearance in a retinal appearance. Can be an experimental error. Always can be. Okay? But it's very interesting. Now it's going to happen a uh, experiment called SBN, S, SBN in Fermilab. It's going to put three detectors with the L over or the order of this, but the three different L over A. And the three experiments are completely different to each one use a different technique. If it is a neutrino oscillation, you should see the same effect in the three experiments. Okay? Let's try to see what is, what is happening. Can be a mis and one of the experiments have a, have a, a, do a double, uh, he have a, a, a double goal to see if he has oscillations, but also to see, it, and some of the previous experiments, they don't make a mistake because the confusion between electrons and photons. It's a very well, uh, very well known. It's a well spent, uh, spent well uh, thinking to separate electrons from photons. He can solve if this experiment or error, or maybe see if it uh, is, is oscillation. Okay. And another thing you should forget because the Fabio uh, is going to can tell us about this. If you have a stellar neutrino, you are conflicted with cosmology for two reasons. 
It's too heavy neutrino. It's a very funny to say. Very heavy neutrino. Very heavy means electron volt. And too many. Four is too many. You need in cosmology three neutrinos, not four. Okay? This means the seven neutrino is problem is problem everywhere, but for the my personal bias, as they say, this effect here is very interesting, very funny to say. This was proposed by uh, three people from Brazil for the ice cube to test in this experiment here. And then this gave you a very, very nice idea to have this very strong effect here. Okay? And then, I don't know, can be some real new physics or could be a mistake? Let's know in the future. Okay? Thank you. So like yesterday, we can start with uh, questions uh, to Orlando, and then we merge with the general question session, okay? So questions? How would sterile neutrinos affect structure formation? Um, because they are very heavy. It is, if you the story, okay, probably we can say from what they say. But, uh, they huh? Yeah. Yeah. The scale of the study formations, you have a heavy strategy. Not, not complicated. And that's what we okay. This is wrong. It will be a light energy. Like a point one electron of volt. Or is it one electron of volt. Okay, well, where you have the structure going. You can say both of them. Question. This uh, mechanism of the four neutrino depends of the hierarchy of the masses of the other three. The, this mechanism of, of, as you explained us, of the four neutrino depends of the hierarchy of the masses of the. Yeah, uh, I choose a heavy so the hierarchy for this kind of neutrino that it has conflict, with but not too many conflict. You can think it another way that the kind neutrino is the right one. Then it's even worse because then it's too heavy. You a nightmare for so There is a right, I want to think that it is the heavy state. Because it is the right state. You take should be one little volt. Means the outer state above should be one little that the sum of the outer neutrons four electrons have. So it has too many some of the masses should be too heavy. That heavy state the heavy state not in the right place. Okay. I didn't understand uh, the the matter, neutrino matter oscillations. There were. What is the number B exactly? Okay. Uh, I, I I I I don't say. What is B? What can happen to say? So Orlando, sorry. If you can keep the microphone, just as we are recording. Uh, what happened, they say, when you have the neutrino interact in the media, you get it, it's, this is depend of the, of the material of the media, and this is proportion of the, of the, of the, of the, of the density of the media, and this is what they call uh, the V, is the matter potential, is the effect, how much is the, how much do you get, uh, how much mass you get for the neutrinos because the media is present there. If you have a vacuum, you have no good debution, it's proportion to the density, but if you have this, you are just additional this from like effective mass of the neutrinos. Okay, the information some I, I I think yeah should put you can put like some effective mass of the neutrinos is the mass of the neutrinos plus two times this matter potential. Okay, that's uh, this is not as completed. Uh, there has to be uh, materials are not here, but shouldn't include mismatches something like this. If you have this matter potential, 
if you multiply by the energy this gives the contribution for them, something like behave like a mass for the neutrinos. You are this is called effective mass. Okay? And then uh, the what is interesting to say is not this number here is the order of 10 to minus 14 electron volt for the Earth. This means that it's not all the energy that can have some effect here. You should assume some specific energy that can be more relevant. Okay? This means that depending on the neutrino energy, this energy depends on effect. Because this can explain this deep there, if you have some very specific energy. Okay? Questions? Well, I, I, didn't, I did not understand the, uh, why the... Uh, in order to have a current sum of the mass against states, I think the fourth uh, sterile neutrino it needs to be produced. And it, if it was produced, it's not sterile. I don't understand that. No. Here you don't have... Uh, in this special? Yes. Here you don't have sterile neutrino. Oh, the fourth... It no, is this is the fourth state. Ah, the fourth state. This is the fourth state. Remember the state. This is, you need to add, add the some additional mass in your state to have your solution to short baselines. Okay? And because you need to have it, uh, you need to have it, uh, for example, if you move one square plus move two square plus move three square plus move four square, could be equal to one to have some uh, system that have uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the dynamics is uh, unitary, then this state here, and because this also have some combination of the sterile neutrino with the first state. And because this, we, we, let's put here, the sterile neutrino will have something like this. Sterile one, new one, and okay, have you here, and sterile four, new four. This means if you have a new four, and this change with the time, this means that sometimes you're going to have uh, some sterile neutrino, and sometimes you're going to have new neutrino. And because this you can have conversion between new neutrino and sterile neutrino. Then the sterile neutrino is not the real uh, physical state, it's the fourth neutrino. It's the fourth neutrino. Yes, thank you. Questions? Okay. Um, is there any model where you add a sterile neut neutrino and a fourth lepton? Or, no, a fourth charged lepton? In the case. Yeah, this is the point uh, they say. Uh, this was the, the, the first idea that people have is this. Let's add some neutrino and also some lepton there. But if you add this, you can make like a copy of the lepton and electron neutrino and electron. If you do that, this means that probably they, are, they interact by weak interactions, W or Z. And because the experiment of the sun, they, I don't say the name, but the, the Z0, you cannot have this. This addition neutrino should be sterile. They not, cannot have interactions with the W and Z. This means it cannot be a syncretion neutrino. It should be a separate state. Uh. Uh, there are some scenario or some theory uh, that you don't need the sterile no neutrino to explain the experimental that data, or you need to have the fourth no neutrino. I know two for solutions sure. for the NACD. The two solutions one was given by Bo. Uh, one it was given by assuming that he, the neutrinos is not behave like a, a normal quantum system. But it's like an open quantum system, and then in this way you can you can get this, this in, I think of this access of electron things. This I think is one I think is one model to explain that, and then the other model to explain that is that say uh, imagine that when you have this production here of the mu neutrino state uh, of the the, uh, the mu neutrino in the NCD, they have the high the four state. You have an additional state like this, but this is not oscillate. What happened to this state, instead of the oscillate, he decays. And because the neutrino decays, like the processor on that side before, he decays, and he decays in, correct, in the correct way, he can produce electron neutrinos. Okay? 
Okay, I think now we can open to questions for all the speakers of today, including Andre and Fabio. So yeah, you keep you keep asking, but you can broaden your, your questions. Who had a question? Somebody can I suggest two hand? things, Martin? Yeah. Martin, can I suggest two things? Yeah. First of all, if you have a question that you have asked in private, please ask it in public. Yesterday, five people asked me exactly the same question, and I had to explain it five times. If you ask it here, any of us will have to explain it once. Second, I might, it's obvious, it's sociological, it just works that way, but most of the questions are asked by the same people. Maybe we should give a chance to someone who has never spoken to break the curtain of shyness first. Sure. And also recall that uh, any question is welcome, so not only things directly related to the lectures. If you have a question that you feel is too advanced, too it's nice to ask. As uh, Fabio said, it's more productive if you ask collectively and just to the individual so that the answer can go to everyone. So, you know, no need to be restricted to the talks. And yeah, I think it's nice. Uh, somebody that never asked a question before. Yes, you didn't ask a question, so you, you can ask. I'm going to say it for all the professors. Say it again. You understand why you were a bit afraid to ask questions sometime in the past where you are? Good. I see some new faces. Yes. Hi, uh, I have a question. I don't know why in cosmology there is only uh, three neutrinos. I mean, why can be? Why is not allowed to be more than three neutrinos? Because I, I don't get that. So, in conflict. terms, it's not three neutrinos. So, um, let's put it this way: when you when you compute the expansion rate of the universe, okay, the expansion rate of the universe, which is the Hubble rate. It depends at each time, which also means each temperature correspondingly, okay? If you write down the Einstein equation, what's pushing the universe is the energy density of the universe in that moment, okay? So, on one end you have that it's general relativity. When you write down the Friedman Robertson Walker, that's the case. So, when you write down the expansion rate of the universe, what enters the push that you give to the universe is the dominating energy density, okay? Today, we are pushed by the cosmological constant or the dark energy, whatever it is. Between redshift 1000 and today, it's the matter, mostly. Well, redshift 0 0.5. Around before CMB, it's the rel relativistic degrees of freedom that are pushing the universe, okay? So whatever is relativistic is contributing to accept pushing the universe away. So when you are at a temperature of uh, giga electron volts, what are the relativistic species? Let, 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 let me get to the bottom are completely out of your question. I'm going to get there. Okay. So the primordial nucleosynthesis is the, is the probe that you have of the most ancient time, okay? So the highest temperature. And it is the case that it's highly sensitive to how the universe is expanding during the neutron decay, around 1 MeV. Around that epoch, the only relativistic things are the photons and the neutrinos. There are no other stable particles that are relativistic. So 
whatever is contributing to the push of the universe, to the expansion of the universe, is the photon and the neutrinos. So when you take the light elements as a cosmological probe, you are testing the density, the baryon density, and you are testing the numbers of relativistic degrees of freedom and neutrinos. As a matter of fact, you have room for 0.1 more. You have three relativistic degrees of freedom plus or minus 0.14. And actually, in a different way, also the CMB depends a little bit on how many relativistic degrees of freedom there are around. Okay? So there is space for that because when you, when you look at something that is sensitive to that point, you are allowed only that. I would have to go a little bit into the details of BBN, but also if, if you can't write down the Einstein equation and how the universe uh, expands, it's, it's difficult to explain. But the expansion is driven by the relativistic species. And the relativistic species at the BBN are photons and neutrinos. Do you agree, Orlando, with this explanation? I have another question. Uh, for example, um, you have considered modification to the cosmology principle for your uh, space can you time. Speak loud? Can you speak louder? No, no, it's working. It's just okay. uh, um, if, for example, oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, for example, I work with in gravity with torsion. So, um, for torsion. So, for, uh, you can do like the cosmology principle with torsion that you have another condition, not just a condition for the metric, to found the uh, robinson worker metric. So in that context, uh, there is paper that say that the expansion of the universe is not um, a consequence of, it's not the responsible, the dark energy, that the torsion can be the responsible of the expansion of the universe. In that context, maybe... But it would be today. Huh? But it would be today. It would. M it would start becoming important later on. Yeah. And that doesn't modify the answer because BBN and, and the testing of the amount of relativistic degrees of freedom is when the universe is driven by relativistic degrees of freedom, which happens around... Uh, the, the, the matter radiation equality is around redshift uh, 2000 something. So okay. everything that concerns uh, matter dominated epoch or uh, lambda or however you want to call it W, so dark energy is of concern of today the universe is pushed by relativistic degrees of freedom early on the reason is that if you write down the energy density the scales like 1 to the a to the minus 4 whereas matter scales like 1 to a, to a to the minus 3 and lambda or whatever makes lambda is A1 so if you want the the energy density of, of uh, relativistic stuff goes like this. That's very steep. And this is an index of two, minus 4. Then you have this, which is minus 3. And then you have sort of a constant, which, well, it should be a constant, which dominates later on. So we are looking at the region when we do BBN or relativistic stuff, which is around here. And it's a moment, again, BBN, when the relativistic degrees of freedom are only neutrinos and photons. If you go up, if you find the probe of the universe at the PEV, well, also protons and quarks are relativistic. So the relativistic degrees of freedom at that moment are not only the photons and the neutrinos, but are other things. The BBN is a probe of that moment, and in that moment, the relativistic degrees of freedom are those. Okay, thank you. There was this person, uh, you, yes. Martin, can yes. you give her the microphone? Uh, Orlando, in this uh, equation, if the energy is too big, there is no oscillation. Yeah. But this is in the vacuum, exactly. and the results with with sterile neutrino are in matter. Yeah. So the, this probability in matter, there's no oscillation too for big energies? Uh, it would be different. Uh, uh, okay, what happened to say...
Yeah, the simple answer, yes. <laughs> what is going to happen to say, if you're in the matter, what happened, you can translate the neutrino seizure in the matter, you have the semi format. The behavior is different, but the semi format. Then you can put it like this is in matter and this in the matter. But this now have energy dependence and this also have energy dependence. Okay? And because this, you have this strong effect there. There's some specific energy which this became very big. Okay, it's become something like this. And then it became to go down almost. And then when you very high energy, you have two suppression factors. Because this effect here, and also because this effect here. To very high energy, when you, uh, to, we have more matter, you more suppress the This is for call, this is a uh, resonance, and here is matter suppress. Question? Is there any possibility that someone can explain dark matter with sterile neutrinos? So I that, yes. So just to connect with Finaldo, and you will hear about this next week too. So cosmologists do like sterile neutrinos for dark matter, but m more massive ones. Like uh, Orlando was saying, this is too light and screws up the number of relativistic species, like Fabio said. But if you have a way more massive sterile neutrinos that, the, that are not relativistic uh, uh, at, at the early universe until the, the thermal history that we follow, there's no problem. They will not screw up the large scale structures. As Fabio mentioned earlier today, if you have too light dark matter, or to light star neutrinos, it, it also uh, dilutes the large scale structure. So if you have uh, higher mass neutrinos, uh, uh, star neutrinos, they are good for cosmology. Finaldo mentioned that, and also next week, we will have a talk on an experiment that is, there are potential signals of, of star neutrinos astrophysically, and we will hear about an experiment that's trying to measure them and so on. So there's, there's a, a lot of things to be said, that there will be said about that in the next few days. It's important that they fulfill all the constraints. As long as you can fulfill the constraints about coldness and warmness and you don't suppress the small skills, that's fine. So Farinaldo is going to talk about it. Sorry. Uh, so he's interpreting this sterile neutrino with very light. But this sterile neutrino can be as heavy as I want within a particle physics contest. So I can make the mass of this sterile neutrino not to explain this anomaly. Just forget about this anomaly. In the context of dark matter can be as heavy as I want. It can be G, V, T, V if I want to. Okay. And there are other consequences to that, but I'll be talking about this on Thursday. <laughs>